All right, so picture this. You get to church on Sunday morning, you're ready to play. You got your HX Stomp plugged in, you've practiced all your parts, everything is gonna be great. But then the worship leader looks at you, looks at his phone, looks back at you and says, the keyboard player who's responsible for all the ambient stuff and the, the underscoring has to quarantine. They can't make it today. I need your help. I need you. I need you to cover those parts. I need you to step up. Can you help me? Can you do it? And then you look at him, you say, I got you. I got this. I know exactly what to do. And in a much more real sense, I have no idea what to do. You know, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes we don't get to play what we've planned or we have to fill in a more ambient role that we're not really used to. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to play ambient and specifically with the HX Stomp, looking at it as a standalone unit. Can it ambient? Can it cover all the grounds that you would need if you were called upon to play those parts? So let's do this, let's find out. So are we ready to see if this thing will ambient? I think it can, actually. I know it can. That's why we're making this video. Um, everything we do today, I'm just gonna build straight from the HX Stomp, nothing else. I have a compressor and a reverb and stuff on my board, but I'm not using any of that. Everything, all the sounds you hear will be coming out of this, going straight into GarageBand, and that's it. All right, so the first thing we need to do is start with a clean amp tone. I'm gonna be using the Princess Amp, dialed in how it is on my Expanse pack. I'm going to lower the gain and increase the channel volume a little bit. Now, if you're gonna follow along and build this patch with me, you don't have to use this amp. Just make sure you pick an amp that can clean up really well. All right, but like I said, we're gonna use the Princess Amp. I have it saved over in my favorites. We'll drag and drop that there. But instead of using the Princess Cab, the one I have on the Expanse pack is a 10 inch speaker, which I really like because it makes it really punchy. Today, I'm gonna be using using the 12 inch cab that I have from the Deluxe. Drag and drop that in there. And this is our clean tone. Sounds pretty good. All right, the next thing we want is a compressor. I'm gonna paste one in here that I already have dialed in. This is what it sounds like. Turned off. It just adds a little more sustain, a little more compression, and a little bit of volume. Now, I always like to add a room reverb. Um, I have one saved here, it's called Room Slap Ambi. <laughs> we'll put this here at the end of the chain. Save that. This is how it's dialed in. Sounds like this. Now that would be my bass amp tone right there, which Sounds pretty good. All right, now to start dialing in the ambient part of this, the second thing we're gonna wanna do is bring in a nice ambient reverb. Now, a lot of people think that the reverbs on the HX Stomp are its weakest point, and I agree. But I've made a video showing you how you can dial in the reverbs. I'll link it up here, and I'm gonna be using one of those, but I'm gonna tweak it a little bit to show you how we can get some really good ambient sounds and have it sound really good. We're gonna be using the Glitz Reverb with these settings. Noticed I have maxed out the decay. I've brought up the pre-delay a little bit. I've gotten rid of all the low end and I've kept all the high end. Right now it's at a mix of 50. We're gonna change that in a second. The level's the same. There's some of this stuff. Those are just the settings that I include in my Expanse pack. And it sounds like this. All right, so it's a little bit strong. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna drop this down on a parallel path, bring it right down here, right before this other reverb. And um, now that it's down here, we want to increase the mix to 100. Now let's see what this sounds like. Sounds pretty good, but it could still be a little strong. So what we need to do is go to this split block right here. It was on Y, I put it on A and B, and now we just have this like slider that we can slide it more to the A path that's on top here or more towards the B path. And since we have a really thick ambient reverb, we're gonna scoot this a little bit 
towards the A path to taste and we'll be able to play with that. I think what would be cool with this too is set an expression pedal to control the slider. That way you could bring in more or less on the fly. But I've slid it a little bit here to get away from the low end. If I slide it all the way, it'll just bypass this reverb completely. And if I slide it all the way the other way, we'll be 100% wet. So back to the middle and let's slide a little bit more towards the A path. Now you might be thinking that's way too much reverb still, but remember we're doing ambient pad sounds. So we want this big, real washy sound that goes on forever. Now with the Glitz reverb, with the maxed out decay, it lasts a long time, but it doesn't go on forever like the Jet Revelation does. So the sounds will layer and layer on each other, but it doesn't get too muddy. And the more you bring this slider to the A path, the more you can dial out what you don't want. So let's dial out a little bit more. I say 58, sure. I mean, that sounds beautiful. Just doing this little trick, I think, makes the reverb sound so much better. All right, the third thing we wanna do to add a little more texture is to add a couple delays. Now, one of the things you could do is add an auto swell delay, like if you didn't have a volume pedal, because I'm trying to keep this just our guitar and our HX stomp. Now, you can always do swells with your knob, but then it can be a little frustrating trying to strum and, and do the knob if you're not used to it. And so, there are actually some really good auto swell delays in here. Let's check those out. This is a really good one, the Adriatic Swell. Let's just see what that sounds like. Now these swell delays work really good, especially if you're just hitting a chord. It can tell that's the chord and it wants to swell, but it does get tricked up a little bit if you start picking individual notes. But we're actually gonna use a different delay. I'm gonna paste this one in here that I've had. I have it set to a quarter note, the feedback lower, and we'll get to that in a minute why. I brought the bit depth up because the lower that is, the more um, grit is introduced into the repeats and we want our repeats to be pristine. Our sample rate, I think, is where it was. The mix is at 45. And here are the other settings, our trails are on. I have the headroom up, which also affects how clean the trails are. The scale is all the way at 100 because we just want quarter notes right now. So now this is what we have. All right, that sounds pretty good, but we need a little more bouncing around of the delays. So we're gonna add another delay with a different time signature to try to get a galloping type sound. So I'm gonna paste in my other delay here. This is the ping pong delay. I've set it for half notes. Now notice that the feedback on this is a lot higher. And I noticed as I was playing around with this that if you're stacking um, delays, not reverbs, if you're stacking delays, having the second delay have a longer feedback rather than the first one allows the repeats to be a little more clean and not so much. I did bring the scale down to 75%, which on a half note would be a dotted quarter. The spread is all the way up because we're in stereo, why not? The mix is at 45 as well, and everything else is the same. Now let's hear this one by itself. Much more feedback, clean repeats that go on for a while. Now we'll double it up with this other delay, and this is what we got. I think we are in super ambient territory. It already sounds amazing. I think the only thing we need to add now is what I talked about in my last video, which is chorus. We cannot live without chorus. 
Let's save our progress. I'm gonna drag in a chorus that I've used from my favorites down here. The Dimension Chorus is the one I've been using a lot lately. I love it. Let's turn that on. I've been using this on the first of the four settings. If you wanted something a little more uh, drastic, you could use this fourth one down here, but I like the first one. Now, let's see what we got. Super Ambient Zone. Wrong chord. That sounds good. Now the fourth thing you can do, and I've talked about this on my channel before, and that is to create your own pad using a looper. Now the bad thing about using the looper on the HX Stomp is that it doesn't save it. It doesn't save it once the unit has been turned off. So you need to record this loop live. But if we were gonna do that, I set it to foot switch three here. What I like to do is record a silent loop first. This helps there from being any harsh cuts in your looping. We'll let this go on for like 10 seconds. Okay, that's good. All right, so now we have a silent loop recorded and it's just playing, there's nothing on it. And so now as we add different layers, there will be no start and stop like this. What key do we wanna play in? When I play guitar in these videos, I always freak out because I'm like, I play the same thing all the time. Let's play in a different key. Let's say the worship leader needs you to make a pad in the key of B flat. Let's do it. No capo, we're just going for it. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is just do some swells to kind of get a sound bed. And that may be where we stop. Here we go. That's a pretty pad, now we can just play over that. say one of the drawbacks of using the looper on the stomp as you just heard when you click it off it just goes away there's no trails there's nothing like that so it'd be cool is if you had an expression pedal hooked up to the playback volume when it was on you could assign it to bring down that volume gently and that would be pretty cool all right, one more thing I wanna to talk to you real quick about playing ambient music. You really wanna pay attention to your playing style and the types of chords you play. Now in this kind of music, we have a lot of effects, which means we need less notes. The more notes you play with more effects, it can get real muddy and get away from you really quick. Now one of the things people miss when coming from other genres is that they're used to playing without all these effects and so they fill up space with more notes. And so just remember, when you're playing ambient music, you're layering a bunch of different effects, you just need less and more simple notes. Which leads into the next thing, our chord shapes. I mentioned briefly, I don't like to play a lot of lower end notes when I'm playing this ambient music, especially in a mix. So let's just say I needed to play something very ambient in the key of C, I would probably choose the chords G, A minor, and F to circle through before I resolve to the C. Now I could play those, I could play those notes way down here on the neck and that would be fine except they're kind of beefy down there and so I want to find those same chords further up the neck. Let me show you. Now let's find the G chord up here. We need the, the one, the three, and the five. So I'd find the one note right here, play the three down here, and play the five right here. And that chord sounds like this. And then I just move up two frets to the minor, just remembering to drop the three a half step. And then go back down four frets for our F. And it would sound like this with all of our stuff on.
I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, would you please do me a favor and hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on anything new. I've got some really cool videos coming up. I say that at the end of every video, but that's because it's true. You don't want to miss out. All right, I got to edit this video and make sure it's a complete unit and something that you want to watch. So I got to go. I'll talk to you guys later. See you in the next video. Bye.